gentlemen, this is the big moment we've all been waiting for. Y'all ready for this? Welcome to the MC world. This is how we get out of Chicago all the time. You know, it's only fucked up because we only get four or five months, but the four or five months is the only pop. When do we get paid for this shit? Hey, how are Willie Boots, the number one stunner. Shot town we watch the throttle on Chrome. Hey, the bike scene in Chicago has exploded. It's taken off. It's out of control. Women are taking over. <laughs> we the best in the city. Any club want to run up, come see the stunners. The women of Shot town they doing their things on the bike. We, I think in the city of Chicago, we got all the females ride bikes bigger than any other city or whatever. And next year, it's going to be even bigger. No more riding on the back of the bikes. We'll get y'all. We're really just one big family. You know, we, we unite. We come together. We talk with each other. It's a bike thing. That's all we do. Ride bikes and shit. Women's, men. Some of everybody ride bikes out here now, man. So this, it's a culture and a lifestyle. That's really the biggest thing you need to know. But this is how we do it, though. It's a beautiful thing. In Chicago here, we ride like this here. This is how we do it now. Chicago is an aggressive town. You're either going to end up being a legend from, from the pressure or you're going to end up being nobody. How you like it, man? Oh, I love it. This is my life. This is what I do. This is Chicago, the Windy City. We a brotherhood, man. We fellowship, man. We a big, we a brotherhood. My name is Jason Britton, and you're watching Throttle and Chrome. We are Daddy Riders, and you're watching Throttle and Chrome. Chicago, more widely known by its residents as the Windy City, is the third largest city in the United States. The African American motorcycle culture here is really just a way of life, as you will see for yourself throughout the rest of this documentary. Not just a regular recreation for the true blue riders, it's the highest form of thrill and gratification to hit the road and be at one. Now as for myself, I've been riding literally since the age of five, from mini bikes to dirt bikes to sport bikes and ultimately Harley Davidson's. Now particularly Harley Davidson ridership and ownership has increased here in Chicago over the last five to 10 years in the African American community. The increase in Harley Davidson ridership has not just been limited to the fellas either here in Chicago. No, no, no. The women have come out in strong numbers over the last several years to buy their own Harley Davidson. Long from the days of being the passenger on the back to being the sole controller of their own motorcycle in the front. Introducing you to the African American motorcycle culture here in Chicago is one of the foremost experts on the subject. I'm talking about Big Jig, one of the four founding fathers of what has become in a very short time the largest black motorsport club in the United States. Follow Big Jig as he takes you on a tour of the city to look at some of the most intriguing, entertaining, and exciting bike clubs, personalities, custom bikes, along with some great parties that has ever been recorded and put on DVD out of Chicago. So you're a philosopher? Yes. 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 Back in the day, most people just got together. There was more of a motorcycle enthusiast 
they get together and they just ride to wherever we was going, whatever direction. Now it's a little more structured because you got different clubs, different club members that have different ideas on what they what they represent and how they how they want to pursue the way they ride and the riding style. So you got people that are more into traits or more into racing, more into cruising, more into the things that they enjoy doing on their bikes compared to just following the norm of what everybody's doing. They have different groups that have different agendas of how they want to ride their bikes, which is very, which is, which is bring the motorcycle industry into a different level. Because now you have so many females riding, they have clubs, they have club parties, they got, they gather together, they have, back in the day, you know, you have one or two females that like China, you know, had Pat, you know, you had, you had a couple of females that's riding with the guys. Now you got females with their own bikes, they own, they own club dues, they own club uh, assessments on how they want to ride their bikes and how they, because they're a little different than the guys. The guys, because, because of the organization and they uh, put together themselves and police themselves on how they want to conduct themselves. So it's a whole different world out here, which, which is, uh, which is refreshing to see. Toronto and Chrome, we showing how black bikers get out all over the world. We showing up to show out. Believe that. The image of bikers is unsettling to most non-bikers. The overall biker image for anyone has gotten a bad rap and especially for blacks. For African American bikers, most importantly, we have two things we need to live down the fact that we're black and that we're bikers. So to the viewing audience, black bikers are just like everyone else and nothing less. Big Jig is invited to several clubhouses to interview some of Chicago's MC clubs. His first visit is with Hell's Lovers MC. We here at the Lovers, one of the most predominant all black outlaw outfits out here. We hanging out. Tell them what's your name, man. Tell hey, they call me the Booger Man, but let me correct them on one thing. We're not all black. We're multiracial. That's one thing that we realized a long time ago that you got to be able to deal with the motorcycle rider. We ain't trying to make this shit where you got to be black to ride. You got to be able to ride a motorcycle. You got to be willing to hang. You got to be willing to love your bros, take care of your bros. So that's one thing I just need to correct you on. We, we got multiracial in our club organization but it's a man's club because as far as we concerned everybody can ride but in our club if we just dealing with the men's point of view we don't have to deal with the other point of view now we don't have no problem with the females that's out here because all glory to them if them girls can get on them eyes and strap their legs across them and do what we do i ain't got no problem with them but the love that we got right now is this motorcycle thing tell them what's going on right now in the bike community man how you feel about it and where you think it's gonna go in the next 10 years? Where you wanna see it go? I would love for it to, I would love for this motorcycle scene to go back to where it was. It was, it was about riding your motorcycle. It wasn't about what you was riding. It was about riding. It was about people learning to get to know each other and, and, and going to somebody's club and enjoying yourself, kicking it, getting your name out there, learning their names and, and, and figuring out how to correspond with each other because everybody got a different point of view. Everybody out here got a different point of view. That's what makes your clubs so bad when you get too many numbers because you got to deal with all those different attitudes. For those who don't know, I've been out here 25 years. This guy been out here longer than me, 35, 40 years. And one thing that we trying to bring back is the, the brotherhood and the unity of riding. That's lost, because it's done got commercialized. With the roundups, with all the rodeos and everything that's going on has been commercialized, we need to take that back. This is one of the guys that's most respected in the, in the Midwest and all over the world. And we down here, we showing them support, because this my man, Santana my man, and the lovers all of them, we gonna always show them support. Hey, and you know what the good thing about that is? That's the most important part about this whole thing. Showing a unity, showing some type of respect for each club, each club. You know, it's not about how many numbers I got or how many numbers you got. It's about you guys showing your respect for whoever you with. 
if you with somebody, show respect for that club. If you wearing a patch, wear that patch proudly. You know, don't just put a patch on your back and don't know your history. Find out where that patch come from. Find out what it mean. Find out who you visiting. You know what I'm saying? Cause my club, I got brothers on my wall. Maybe you can go around before you leave and you can look up here. This is my rest in peace wall over here. These are pictures of brothers that died up here at the top that made sure that brothers like myself could do what we do. You feel me? My club has been in existence for over 40 years. And these brothers paved the way when it was black folks couldn't ride Harleys. Look at the black folks on Harley Davidson's now. Look at what we're doing now. Just like the Rounder. The Rounder was a black Rounder. It was sold. Everything is like for a price. But your pr it should not be a price on what you believe in. If you believe in anything, it should not be a price on it. That's like your family. Are you going to sell your family? This is my family, man. Where I'm going? Welcome out. Tell them what zero percent percent mean. Zero percent means that my tolerance is like right here, zero percent. But now back in the day, when the uh, FBI brung out one percent, a lot of people want to say they outlaws. So they got it confused. The FBI said back in the day that one percent of all the bikers in the world was outlaws. So now everybody want to capitalize this one percent. But what it really means is, it's only a handful of bikers that's bad. That's what it meant. A handful of bikers that's bad. It didn't mean every outlaw out here is about being something bad. What it meant was 1% of a thousand, 1% of a million, 1% of a trillion is not up to no good. That's what it meant, okay? But now, let me get you back to the main thing, the main thing at hand. If we don't take control and try to figure out that we want to get along with each other and just ride our motorcycles and appreciate each other, we're going to lose because these patches is going to go into a RICO act. Hold on. Wait a minute. What? Rewind that. If we don't take control and try to figure out that we want to get along with each other and just ride our motorcycles and appreciate each other, we're going to lose because these patches is going to go into a RICO act to where nobody's going to be able to wear these patches. RICO Act, the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, commonly referred to as RICO Act or RICO is a United States federal law that provides for extended criminal penalties and a civil cause of action for acts performed as part of an ongoing criminal organization. What it basically means is any person or group who operates or manages as an enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity may be in violation of the RICO Act. Nobody's going to be able to wear these patches. We're going to go into a situation where we can't control Right now we can control it. All we gotta do is show unity with each other. If we show unity and stop fighting, <laughs> if we show unity and stop fighting, things would be so much different. Unity is what makes clubs stronger. Makes clubs get together, makes clubs be able to talk to each other. If you can't talk and you can't communicate with each other, you got the same thing you got now. A bunch of people riding different ways and nowhere to go. Another prominent club that exists throughout Chicago is Next Level MC. Big Jig catches up with the national president, Juice, for an interview. The prayers of Next Level MCs, Juice. What's going on, Juice? What up, baby? What up, what up, what up? So Y'all don't know, man. This guy right here, man, he's been riding for a while, man. He come on the scene and smash it, put it down. Got a couple of chapters, man. How many chapters are uh, Next Level? Two chapters, guy? baby. Two chapters getting ready to open up in Atlanta and in New York City pretty soon. Dallas, Texas, Chicago, Illinois. That's what it is. Well. This is what I want to bring to the table, man. A lot of people look at the MCs as the older guys that kind of hang out. But check it out. This is the new breed of MCs, man. Juice bring a different flavor to the table. You know, still keeping it real, 
kid still following the MC rules, but he got his own flavor. His next level got their own style. They're a new urban type of style of MC club. You know, um, what, what you riding out here, man? We ride, we ride, we ride all types of stuff, man. Me personally, I ride Harley Davidson, man. I learned on the Harley Davidson, that's how I do it. But at the same time, man, we, we support all bikers that come around, you know what I'm saying? Cross Rockets, Harleys, Cruisers, Foreign Cruisers. You know, as long as you got a bike, you're a biker, we respect you in that in that manner. But next level, next level is, is exactly what it is. We're trying to take this whole motorcycle thing to the next level. Right now, as it stands, I try to just bring us to the to the point and get the respect from the old heads and let everybody know that you know we just not we're not taking those shorts. We're coming out here, we riding, we show up, we do big things, we ride slick bikes like this one right here, and you know, let's get it popping. That's all. It's a new breed now. Juice is one of them. Next level MCs. That's what's up. Holler at us when you're in Chicago, baby. Check in. You watch the throttle one. Watch the throttle one. You went never long watching Friday Night Crawl. Gotcha. While at Next Level MC's Clubhouse, Big Jig had an opportunity to interview one of the founding fathers of Soul Rebels MC, Geno Mack. What's going on, my brother? How's man, it feel, man? Everything's good, man. Out on a good all night, up. man. Hanging out. out. Man, hey, man, it's beautiful out here, man. See all this, this, uh, this camaraderie, man, and all this be just beautiful up, fellowship, man. This, this is, is how love. how the bikers do it, man. Everywhere we go, man, people know. Soul Rebels, man, one of the most favorite clubs out here. They just like Next Level. They MCs, Appreciate and they do it big out here, man. Tell me what's significant about your club, man, that stands out, you know, that you feel. Man, we just try to do us, man. We ain't trying to uh, 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 be phony and fake, man. We just all young professionals, man, trying to make this thing happen. Get out here on these bikes and have a good time, man. That's what we do. So, so what you riding out here? What, what you got? I see y'all in the Harley shirt. I don't know. Oh, well, you know, you, you know, you know. I ride that Harley, man. That chromed out uh, road king custom, baby. 2003 anniversary, baby. How much money you think you got in your bike? Woo, Just baby. a rough guessing. Man, we got to put a rough guessing in. I had to say about forty. Okay, all right. That ain't nothing. But he just that's just a little change. That's you know. little money for people that really care about riding, man. This game is for love. It ain't for the money. You know, you work hard. You're supposed to play hard. That's what it's about, all the time. How many members you got right now, G? Oh man, we sitting on about 20 members, man. 20 members strong. We keep a nice, close knit pack, man. Cause you know what I'm saying we ain't trying to have a lot of confusion, but. We, you know what I'm saying? We got, we a brotherhood, man. We fellowship, and we a big, we a brotherhood, man. That's how we do. So why did you come up with the name Soul Rebel? Man, we ain't brothers. We soul. We, we, you know what I'm saying? We rebels, and we, we got soul. You dig? Soul you got, rebels. You got beat up on people or something? Oh no, know? man, dude. We, man, dude. We, man, we most peaceful guys in the world, man. You dig? We, hey. It is. We ain't messing with nobody, don't mess with us, but don't get it twisted, Jack. So what he mean is they sold rebels of the game, this this bike game, man, they rebels. Rebels without a cause, man. I like what you're doing out here, brother. You know when we ride, man, we ride together. They always do it big. They all ride. They all ride Harleys. I don't know if you got to have a heart to be in that club, but I ain't never seen nobody else on nothing else. So I'm assuming that you need to have a $50,000 bike to be a part of that club. You know? They're not taking no Hondas, but, you know, no disrespect. Right. So I want to thank you, brother, again. Man, Once Big again, G, man, you are man, us. dude. We appreciate last, it, man. Last time, hey, last time okay. we seen you, you had on black. Now you got on white. That's one love, brother. One love, baby. Soul Rebel, MCs. Thank you. Thank you. One, time. one time. Back up. Big Jig catches up with Hellraiser's MC on the south side of Chicago to talk about their club, their clubhouse, and their perspective on the MC bike culture. Hellraisers, 54th and Ashland, 
VP right here. Tell him what's your name, VP. I'm Prince Reverend G, Vice President of Hair Ray Chicago Chapter. But uh, man, we want to uh, congratulate one of the Southside clubs, which is the Hell Ray. Being out here a while, long time on the street. How long you been riding, bro? I've been riding about six, seven years, but really all my life. I quit for a minute. After I tore up somebody else's bike, I said I wasn't going to ride no more. And then, you know, once I got, you know what I'm saying, straight in my life, and I said, hey, man, I'm going to get me a bike. And I started riding about six years ago, rode for a couple of years, ran into some of my guys, they the hell raisers, and I checked it out. And ever since I checked it out, man, I've just been doing the MC thing. It's been stuck with the orange and black since. I can't you know, do nothing else. <laughs> you know what, man, that's, that's what we've been telling y'all through this whole scenario, man. It becomes a culture, it becomes part of your life. You, you meet some guys, man, that you fall in love with, man. It becomes a brotherhood, sisterhood thing. That's what it's all about, man. That's what he's talking about right now. What you riding right now? I'm riding a 07 Street Glide. Look, man, the whole industry is changing, man. Everybody getting on these thing things. Everybody getting on the Harleys, man, so the whole thing is changing. Explain to them, man, what's going on with this wall, man. Who, what's all this stuff on the wall, man? man? It looks like Pink Floyd, This man. is all the MCs that came and visit Hellraiser Clubhouse, man. This is something that we do to, you know, make sure we honor every person that come through the door that's in the MC world or the biker world, period. You know, if you want to sign your name, all you got to do is come down, show love. We'll give you the paintbrush. You sign. As long as you don't sign over nobody else, it's good. So what he's saying is, man, this is a part of the culture, man. You come to People Clubhouse, man, and the way you show love is you put your name on the wall, mama. Hey, everybody know you've been here. You've been hanging out. You might be one of the regulars, but they don't let everybody do it. They don't let everybody do it. But it's all good, man. We're hanging out with the Hellraiser. We're going to stick around for a little while. But for the most part, this is what they do on Wednesday nights. They got the city on Wednesday nights on the south side. Hellraisers, Chicago style MCs. You know what we've been talking about. Been around a long time. Much love, much respect. Man, appreciate it, Jed. Appreciate, appreciate you, man. One love, brother. out here, baby. You know it all the day long. One love, baby. Welcome to the MC world. We're the Soul Rebels, and you watching Throttle Ain't Roll. C H Double H. A custom motorcycle is a motorcycle that is highly stylized or which treats aspects such as frame geometry or engine design in an unusual way compared to standard manufacturing. Custom motorcycles are unique or individually produced in a very limited quantity as opposed to stock bikes or stockers which are mass produced. Big Jig travels to the International Motorcycle Show to get a perspective on what it takes to customize a motorcycle and some of the prices behind it. Well, the secret is you've got to coordinate. Uh -huh. Most people don't coordinate. They say you've got to uh -huh. coordinate. Custom bikes. That's what we're dealing with now, custom bikes. Here's one of the nice custom bikes that's out here now. We're at the International Motorcycle Show 2010. And what you're looking at now and what we're going to be featuring, last uh, part one, we was dealing with uh, the record dealers and different clubs and stuff like that. But we're going to specialize right now in custom bikes. Who builds them? Who puts them together? What's in it? What it takes to put them together? And, and who riding them? All right, so what's your take on doing custom? I mean, do you just come out with a stock bike or do you, everybody's personalizing their bike now. So what do you think about it? Well, we're in the days now where you need to change the game up. Having your own flavor, that makes everybody recognize you. So when you go custom, you want to try to stay custom instead of coming out with stock because everybody has stock. But in my own opinion, I think if you got a nice, uh, a nice custom joint, you have a lot of fun, you get a lot of feedback, which keeps you up in point with the new times and gets you ready for the next year and up and coming. But you got to come right. If there's not a lot of chrome and leather, it ain't happening. What does it really take to put into a custom bike to make it yours? Well, you, uh, you start off with just, it's like a basic canvas. You put into it what you feel like it's going to make it to make it your own. Chrome, um, I switched out my front and back fenders, um, stretched out my tank, uh, full custom paint job, um, new seat, custom seat, um, and I'm not done. I'm still, I'm still doing it. I'm not even done yet. There's so much more to do. Well, you know, for one, it depends on what you want to do, who you are, and how you do your thing, you know? 
Custom is a big part of you. Your bike is you. Point blank fit. You can't do what he do. He can't do what I do. Oh man, you gotta do. You gotta do the big wheel package. If they ain't got a, a 21 to 28 in the back, dog, you ain't on the 109 at all. You know, you gotta get front end done, man. You got a whole lot of stuff gotta be done, dog. Oh, um, I guess it starts with yourself. Um, whatever you like, what you, your style. I put a whole lot. I mean, and you never get through. Every year, you're doing something more and more every year. This year, I'm putting fenders on mine. Basically, it's, it's really not any limits. I mean, when you're a bike, uh, a bike enthusiast, you want your bike to look good, you want, you know, as far as what you do and how people look at you as a rider and how your bike looks, you know, you want to at least not, not put a limit on it. It's a hobby, it's what you do, it's how you get down. I mean, again, and it ain't cheap unless you're doing your own work, but if you're paying somebody to do it, of course, you know how much more expensive it is. So therefore, I don't have a limit on what I do. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Hypothetically speaking, you just bought a brand new bike. What, what is uh, as far as money amount? How much you have to put into it to really make it yours? Uh, I came out with a brand new bike. I put about three grand into it, which is not bad. You can do it piece by piece, or you can do it all at one time. As long as you got the summer ahead of you, not a problem. You can finish it up and at your own pace. Well, if you anything like like these guys here better come with 20 grand or better, you know, but seven, ten thousand dollars to get you started. I found this out the hard way. Oh, so far, about 15,000 so far. Cost was about six thousand dollars. So I say roughly, hmm, depends on who you are. We throw it around 10, 15, you know, that's not counting the bike, so. Do your thing, how you do your thing. The final thing I do is the rims, because that's like another real big expense, which can run you about $3,000. On the custom side, I probably got about $28,000. I just put the 300 kit on it, uh, air ride, custom paint, custom chrome, uh, LED lights. Man, and, and you know, with me being a big dude, I had to make sure I did everything correctly, and, and I got, yeah, probably about $28,000 into it now. $10,000, $10,000. As far as money amount, how much you have to put into it to really make it yours? Uh, I came out with a brand new bike. I put about three grand into it. Okay, well, I know for a fact that um, three thousand ain't gonna get you much on, depending on what bike you got. That will probably get you like a couple of pieces of chrome. I don't know what uh, he's riding, but it's my buddy, longtime friend. So you know, he probably got a couple of screws that's chrome or something like that for three thousand. But yeah, I know for a fact that depending on what you got, just like he said, depending on how much you want to personalize a bike and make it yours. Because you can also use a lot of black chrome and it's much cheaper personalizing your bike out there. Here's one of the bikes that they used a whole lot on. The Hayabusa, it's probably got about, looking at about 30,000 in it, I would say. The bike is probably worth about 12,000. So you're looking at a 40, 50,000 dollar bike. It's got the iPod in the gas tank which is nice, all the pieces of chrome. You got the, you got the interfering, there's everything is, is chrome and it's stretched. Got a 300 tire on the back. So it's probably about 55,000 in the bike. So really personalizing your bike, you can go from 3,000 to 50,000. This is Tisha, I ride a 2010 Custom Street Glide and you're watching Throttle and Chrome. With the ever-growing popularity of motorcycle choppers, thanks in part to some now famous builders and shows such as Jesse James, American Chopper, and such, choppers have enjoyed a large following. As Big Jig finds out for himself from a living legend builder in his own right about just how much goes into a custom chopper. Yo, you're watching Throttle and Chrome. We're at the Chicago International Motorcycle Show here with Matt Hosh, one of the people of the Biker Builders. You've heard of the uh, cable show, Biker Builders. Got the hottest bikes in here. Yo, Matt, tell us. Tell us, man. How do you do it, man? First of all, tell us what this bike is worth right here. Uh, this bike uh, I did on the Biker Build-Off a few years ago, and uh, it was sold for $300,000. $300,000, come on, a bike. 
$300,000, and actually it's well worth it. If you see the structure of the bike and you know anything about bikes, trust me, he put a lot of hard work into this bike. Uh, what you got coming up new for 2008? Uh, we're just doing a lot of touring, and uh, you know, I build one bike a year, so it's pretty slow to see progress, but this one bike, you know, they're expensive because uh, you know, I have to make everything on them, you know. Like on this one, the, the motor itself is a, re it's a replica Vincent motor, but um, you know, it costs 110000 by the time I was done just for the motor, you know. You know, doing my thing, I guess. So it's safe to say that this is more of a hobby to you, because if you're only doing one bike a year, it's a hobby to you. How many do you just, do you sell them or if it's just for fun? Well, see, I, uh, I have a parts line that makes all my money, and also the t-shirts, and uh, the bike building's still fun for me, and that's the way I keep it, so I don't have to rely on the bikes for money, and that way I get to build what I want, when I want, do, you know, all that stuff, so you keep it a hobby and a, and a passion, it's not a business, and, you know, kicking them out the door for money, so. See this, this, you guys gotta understand this. This is what real biking is about. He has a passion for it. It's not, this is not a, just a selling pitch for him. He loves doing it. And that's important out here. We got a lot of people that's getting into bikes, but you got some people that's really truly into it. If he's doing a $300,000 bike, trust me, he's into it, especially if he's not trying to sell it. We appreciate the interview. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you again. Right on brother, thanks. This is Marvelous Marvin White. I ride a Rocket 3, Triumph Rocket 3, customed out 2006, and this is Throttle and Chrome. Slowly but surely, women have received the same respect as any man in the motorcycle community. Women riders are in the footsteps of black female motorcycling pioneers such as Bessie B. Stringfield, who, starting in the 1930s, traveled by motorcycle alone through each American state, which at the time were 48. The outbreak of World War II provoked thousands of women to volunteer for their country. Bessie showed her individualism by joining a motorcycle dispatch unit of the Army. Back then, many black riders were introduced to motorcycle riding during their service in the armed forces. Females that live to ride. Because the revolution will not be televised. and ride to live. That's all about having fun, meeting new people. What, what do you think about the culture has changed as far as being a biker, as far as doing your thing out here as a woman? How do you feel about that? Well, for one, as a woman rider, I feel it's so independent to ride your own motorcycle rather than riding on the back. It's so good to, to ride your own shit. You don't have to ride on the back of no man's motorcycle. Get your own, ride your own. It's the best thing. Get your own bike and ride yourself. Don't ride on the back of nobody bike. It's over. That back riding stuff, it's over. It never happened for me, but it's over for the rest of them. But you definitely don't believe in riding on the back? No. Can't ride on the back of nobody's bike. Can't nobody ride on the back of mine. Female ridership in Chicago, um, it's really nice that it's increasing. I think a lot of women are interested in riding. Um, I used to instruct for the motorcycle riding school and we always had a lot of women riders but you don't really see that representation in clubs and I think um, the more clubs are open to women riders um, and women having full membership in clubs then you'll be able to see that increase and it certainly benefits the club and the MC scene in general. I got everything that I need. I'm legit. License and insurance. <laughs> You'll never take me down, Federalis. I'm not a back rider no more. I ride my own. I'm a hard working nurse. And we doing our things here in Chicago. Us ladies, these men ain't got it on lockdown. We got it on lockdown. They invented it, we perfected it, and we doing our thing. Well, there's so many women out here and they riding hard and slick. I love it. It's like 
for every one guy I see, I see a woman. You know, it, it's like equal, even now. It's not a separation. I love the fact that women, when they came out, they came out hard and deep. Ridership of women was once low. Now there's an overwhelming, increasing amount of ridership among women. And that's because not only are women riding bikes and starting their own clubs, they're entrepreneurs, they're head of households, they're running companies and things like that. Not only do we as women ride our own bikes, we don't want to be on the back of bikes anymore. We're customizing our own bikes, we're starting our club just as LOK is. Not only are we starting clubs, our clubs are incorporated, our clubs are like a business. The women of Chi Town, they doing their things on the bike. We, I think in the city of Chicago, we got all the females riding bikes bigger than any other city or whatever. And next year it's going to be even bigger. No more riding on the back of the bikes, get you on. What the bike scene in Chicago is off the chain. Everybody rides, the ladies they ride, they ride, crotch rockets, cruisers, everything, the tripods, you name it. We it's do it all, bunch baby. Of, bunch of, bunch. Yeah, we do it all. In the five years that I've been riding, the female ridership has grown exponentially. Spell it. And the guys, you know, they they see a girl ride, and you know, then it's like, oh, she rides, she rides. So, you know, everybody rides together. We have fun. And we just kick it. I went from an 883 to 1200, 1200 to Deluxe. The Deluxe, the I'm right, a street glide now. 208. Hold on, wait a minute. The last time we interviewed her, huh, she wasn't riding no motorcycle. Yes, I was. The game has changed. Look at her now. Look don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Look at her. <laughs> she was on a Honda, <laughs> Yamaha, or something TV. like that. Riding in Chicago, we doing it big here. We have choppers, big dogs, street glass, deluxe, sports, anything, and the bikes are sharp. When I say sharp, the bikes are cold. I started seeing more women with the tricked out bikes, all custom chromed out, and I said I wanted to be a part of that, so I went out and bought my bike. We want to go ahead and say that the Shot Town biker women like us want into our shutting it down. Our bikes are custom. They're not paid for, but we did them ourselves. We don't have drug dealer boyfriends. We work every day, we punch the clock, and we do a big thing on sports birds. It's a lot of unity, a lot of love. The girls get together, they ride out shopping, eating, just hanging out, going to the parks, barbecues, you name it. Identity theft. No identity theft. <laughs> I'm sure they, they do have it, but that's not it. Um, but no, there is a lot of unity and just a lot of pleasure we get out of the ride. You should do it more, that's what the shy does. I heard it's sexy to see a woman ride a bike. I think it's, it's cool to be a part of a biking community. Everybody looks out for each other, everybody embraces each other, and we all ride together as one, uh, one family. Right, what inspired me to ride was, uh, I don't know. I, um, when I was little, I had some dirt bikes and stuff like that, but uh, once I became an adult, I just said, I just need to have some more fun. You know, I had all these old cars and stuff like that, and that just wasn't kicking it in for me. So I bought a bike. Then once I fixed that bike up, I bought another bike. Once I fixed that bike up, I bought another bike. Then once I fixed that bike up, I bought another bike. So I guess once I'm done fixing it up, then it's just time to move on to the next one. I think one of the reasons I started riding was, you know, just to feel free something different, something to do in my life that was different. So that's why I started riding. I was a backseat winch for 10, 12 years, and then it was just time to make the transition to riding my own bike, and um, there's nothing else like it. There are a few things I enjoy as much, but I probably shouldn't say that on camera. I wanted to ride ever since I was about 14, because my cousin had a bike, and I always wanted to ride, but my father was like, no, you're not going to get on the bike, you're not going to carry yourself, you know, so when I got older, I got Miss Forster, then I went from Sportster to Deluxe, and now I'm at a street lab, like the guys ride. Yeah, I had a, I had a Sportster, unfortunately, I outgrew the Sportster, and now I'm on a street glide. And all these women, we all got, we just about all had street glides now. If you ain't riding, you ain't glad. Glad you ain't riding whichever way it go. Uh, my first bike was a uh, crotch rocket. Uh, SV650 Suzuki or some bullshit like, like that. <laughs> it was cool, but you know, it just wasn't for me. What's up your name? MJ. MJ, what's that stand for? It ain't Michael Jordan. It's just MJ, who I am. Okay, so we got one with attitude, y'all. So we're gonna have to work with her. We're gonna work her now. Are you a biker? I definitely am. What kind of bike you got? 
Harley Sportster 1200. Oh, she had to let us know it ain't an 883. Right, exactly. It's a 1200. It's a difference. So how long you been riding? Total like 13 years. Shut up. Really? 13 okay, years. can you tell us how? what do your t-shirt mean? Does that have anything to do with riding? Why? No. <laughs> see, see. It says your boyfriend bought my t-shirt. I mean, no, but listen, what do you feel about the culture of riding, how it's changed with women being on their own bikes now? How do you feel about that? I'm excited about it because at one time it was only it was a man's it was a man's sport and now a lot of women are getting into it. So I'm excited about that. I'm happy you know, to see my sisters out here. I just love riding by myself. Now don't get me wrong, when I see women on the back of bikes, sometimes I occasionally wish that I can cruise, but I love to ride on my own. And in Chicago, when I first started riding, I only saw a few women riding their own bikes, but now it is over, I believe it's probably over 60% of females riding independently. And I encourage that. I love to see them. We all get together. We have a good time. We have, uh, you know, little rides that we put on together. And I just love being an independent rider. My independence is important to me because that's just how I was raised. Um, there's nothing in this world you can't have. This is my third bike. I've been riding for 12 years. Um, this is my first cruiser and would never trade it for the world. You cannot get me back on another sport bike, period. Um, it's just nice. It's just a luxury ride. It's a classy ride. It's a sexy ride. And I just enjoy it. I really do. Now, it's about me having my own, getting on it when I want to go. You got to ask nobody, can I ride your bike? Can I see your keys? It's mine, I own it, and I enjoy it. One of the female innovators in the biker world in Chicago is none other than Frankie, who took time out to explain to us how she personally customized her own bike. I've always been mechanically inclined, so with each bike that I've had, I've always put it together myself. You know, I take the time of uh, saving my money and being misused like people out here that uh, take advantage of women that own bikes, okay? So I'm the woman out here that gets her hands dirty, okay? So right here we got a suicide shifter from uh, ATF Customs that was installed. Uh, flat black, which I did myself also. Uh, chrome seat, springs, no fender, hard tail. Each one of these pieces right here were individually made by just a guy that I met off of uh, eBay or Craigslist or somebody. Like these handlebars were actually given to me by a guy uh, that I met on uh, eBay. Uh, these handlebars, these um, uh, hand grips were new by Kiriak and so I just picked those up. But most of the stuff was pretty much custom made for me just by meeting individuals on uh, eBay. You know, the seat was made for me by La Rosa Seats. They made that alone to match the, uh, the grips. Rounding out the interview with the females on what it takes to customize their bikes and what the bike culture means to them, Big Jig had the fortunate opportunity of catching up with Stacy, a fellow biker, who has one of the few premier custom sportsters from Harley Davidson. What I want to ask is, first of all, what inspired you to start riding a motorcycle? Um, being on the back of other people's bike and not being able to ride on my own, I always have to more or less follow behind. Now I like to ride on my own and get it chromed out and stand out. Now, she didn't come small, y'all. She came hard. Her bike, if you see it, it's chromed out as one of the prettiest bikes in the Chicagoland area. And that's hard to say because we got some hot stuff here. And I mean, what, who, who, who came up with this concept? The whole pink and white, was those your colors? I mean, is that your favorite well, color? Is it, well, I mean, it's more or less, it's not pink, it's fuchsia. Okay. And <laughs> well, fuchsia is a, a grade of pink, but it is fuchsia. <laughs> so we're going to say, who came up with this concept? Because the concept um, is hot. Well, the concept um, was came up by Mike and Mokina. Uh, he put together the color for me and the color scheme and everything together. And uh, also my seats and stuff was done by Jason and Tinley Park. Okay, so those are some of the uh, custom shops that uh, we had in our other uh, sequence of bottle and chrome uh, in the Illinois area. Uh, they doing it big and her bike is one of the 
One of the bikes that you can see all of the quality of the work, the rims, from the rims all the way to the to all the inside of the engine, the, the, everything is just totally done and it's got Miss Jazzy engraved in her floorboards. So, I mean, that's a whole nother concept in itself. So it's something that originally she might have done. She got she got some uh, mirrors that got the uh, the uh, digital inside the mirrors. So, you know, just concepts, man. You come up with all this stuff, man. This is part of riding. So what you think about the, the woman, the independent lady riding these bikes, doing it big? How do you feel about being somebody that's, when you're riding in the wind, how do you feel? I mean, it feels great. It's just a, a big relief. It's a stress reliever. Um, I could be having a bad day, and I could just get on my bike, and just all that stress is just is just relieved off of me. Yeah, road dog. That's what that's called, you know. And that's what we like. Female riders are here. We're not going anywhere. We just got to keep it going. We are female riders from Chicago, and you're watching Throttle and Chrome. The first motorcycle was a steam-powered oddity built by Sylvester Roper in 1869. It was a steam-powered bicycle or motorcycle. It went through several revisions and by 1896 it could do 40 miles per hour and ran 7 miles on one load of coal. The small boiler was mounted between the rider's legs on a bicycle-like frame. It had two cylinders and a smokestack. Twist grips on the handlebars served as throttle and brake. The inventor liked to say it would climb any hill and outrun any horse. Roper died like we all should at the age of 73, riding the third version of his crazy contraption around the track at 40 miles per hour. He died in the saddle and was dead before his bike hit the ground. This the four-eyed bike crew. Yeah, we just got together. I, I finally got a job with insurance, so uh, I went and got my specially made. But uh, this how we do in 08, you know what I'm saying? If you ain't got no glasses, you can't ride with us. I ain't got insurance. These them motherfuckers that be in Walgreens, the plus nine and the minus three. That's where my glasses come from. <laughs> I ain't got no insurance. I got to do what I can do. I just go in there and keep trying them. <laughs> I just go in there and keep trying them on. Just increase the, magnif increase the magnification, please. <laughs> my mama be standing there. Which is better, one? Or two. <laughs> we believe in change and we're prepared for it with new techniques and new approaches. One of the more recognizable clubs in Chicago is that of the Chicago Harley Boys and Girls. Formed in the mid 90s, they are not just merely popular because of their catchy name, but more so for their sharp motorcycles, charitable events, and great personalities. The former president and co-founder of the club is Byron, who in his own right was one of the first of his generation to influence Harley ownership to a wave of younger generation riders throughout the Midwest. My name is Byron Cathy. Uh, what's your presence here in Chicago in the bike world? Um, I'm like one of the guys in my era for my age group that was riding one of the first guys riding Harley. I wasn't the first guy to ride Harley, but one of in 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 our age group. I've been riding Harley since 1994. When I first bought a Harley, people said, "Why did I buy that?" And to see what it has grown to in Chicago, the 210 is like a phenomenal within itself. I would say my popularity come from from. I'm a people's person. I love human beings. People are very important to me. They're more important than things. And secondly, the business that I'm in. I had my college for years. I'm known from 103rd in Michigan where everybody used to come, come, come and buy cars from. So I've been in the Highline car business for 25 years. So I took that and went into the bikes. So I'm known for selling all the hot bikes and all the hot cars and just do everything real big. Everybody want to be kings. Everybody want to have their own corner, their own spot, their own space to say, this is what I created. So we have a lot of bike clubs here. Like I'm the founder of the Chicago Harley Boys. I also got a Detroit chapter and I got a Toledo, Ohio chapter. Um, we started, I started riding in 1994. It wasn't a lot of people riding. About 97, a couple more people started to ride. So how it originally started, we used to stop to get gas. So it started off with maybe six or 
selling us. We used to stop to get gas, and we noticed when we get gas and the little kids walk past, they would say, look at those Harley boys. So when the first time we heard it, it's like, oh, okay. So then we went to a couple, now this was a period over us summer, but we noticed the kids would just automatically say, look at those Harley boys. So I said, we're going to be the Harley boys. That's what we're going to be. So that's how the ideal came. So this is about 98. So then more people started writing. So by 204, a bunch of people started writing. So then we decided to collectively put this together and then we became the Harley Boys with the Harley Girls also. So I would say we was an intricate part of changing the dynamics of women riders. And we had all the pretty girls and they would really take they sexy with their bike. I mean, they these are people that love fashion. So now the Harley Girls, with, now the Harley Rider changed from looking a little, little rough to Man, fabulous. Now they fabulous riders. And there's so many pretty women that ride, it's unreal. And it just took a life of its own. And if it was up to, to, uh, to I mean, I want a Harley boys, a Harley girls in every city. And I want a Harley Davidson dealership. Being a used car dealership owner and salesman for over the last 20 years, Byron has had more than his share of experience with assisting customers with purchasing cars and motorcycles. Yeah, so we at my shop, 147, three blocks east of Cicero, Malothian, Illinois, where I sell my car business, sell all the cars. I've been selling high-line cars. If you haven't bought nothing hot from me in 25 years, keep it real, your bag wasn't right. Just, just keep it real. Now, these are some of the things that I sell. These are Harley Davidson bikes. I call these, I call these caterpillars because you have to get a caterpillar first before you can turn it into a, a butterfly. These are some stock Harley Fat Boy Deluxe. Uh, another Deluxe, I got an electric glide outside, I got a Nightster, so I got all type of bikes, but I sell it to you like this, and then you put your own swag on it. If there is such a thing as a right-hand man in both friendship and in business, then Ike Muhammad would certainly be that figure to Byron. Both have single-handedly contributed to hundreds of Harley sales to new and old African-American riders throughout Chicago over the last 10 years. Whereas the influence to even consider a Harley or better yet obtain financing was otherwise pretty much unavailable elsewhere. In every business, you have somebody that gets the money. My secret weapon here is Ike Muhammad. You all know him. Anybody that financed a Harley went through Ike Muhammad. He is the guru of getting financed. Let me introduce you to Ike. Hey everybody. Um, I just gotta say, uh, you know, in the Harley Davidson industry, people just can't come up with the money, so they got me. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, pretty good at what I do. Pretty much help everybody out, get the financing done, get the monies to get the bike, to get the people to get on the road. And uh, with the knowledge and the, all the people that Byron knew uh, in the Harley Davidson business, in the Harley Davidson world, we I had countless and countless hundreds and hundreds of motorcycles and motorcycle clubs we put on the street and, and uh, put smiles on their faces. Uh, just, just, just everybody came to us. I mean, Byron brought, I can't even tell you how many people Byron knew and how many uh, invaluable the, the, the database that he had that um, with, with all the contacts that he had. It was unbelievable, just unbelievable. Thousands, thousands and literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of motorcycle sales went through Byron. Wrapping up his interview, Byron gives his perspective on the Chicago black bike culture scene and also what differentiates the Chicago black bike culture scene from other cities. The Harley scene in Chicago is phenomenal. Uh, everybody picks up their bike, they really into it, we go out and eat, we take trips, we like a big family. Um, the women here, I have been all over. The women here are so into their bikes. They done went from Prada purses to PM wheels. They 
product, they pinwheels, lights, bags, stretch tanks, custom paint, motor work is ridiculous. What makes you different from other cities is Chicago has a short time to ride during the summer. And we get so pumped up during the winter time to redo our bikes so we can make our show in the summer. It's not like LA, Florida where it's hot all the time. So it's more intense here in Chicago, the bikes. You know, the bikes are really your own personality. Chicago is an aggressive town. You're either going to end up being a legend from, from the press store or you're going to end up being nobody. They're going to test you here. They're going to push you to the limit to come outside the best that you can be. It's just an aggressive city. Not nothing bad, but it's aggressive. And we got gangster Christians and we got gangster gangsters. You either going to be gangster for the Lord or gangster for the devil. But you're going to be gangster in Chicago. This is Elizabeth by, from Atlanta by way of Miami. And you're watching Throttle and Chrome. A group of veteran bikers gave their opinion on what it is to ride safe, appropriate riding gear, and how to make the best use of the short riding season reality in Chicago. Now, Father God, we're asking you to protect us on these highways and byways that we travel. Father God, please let us make us to our destination safe and sound. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Let's do it, y'all. All right, y'all. Let's stay together. Well, Chicago, I would say, is uh, probably one of the more advanced cities when it comes to riding bikes. You know, it's a, a heavy populated city, and uh, safety is most important here, you know, because it's so populated and so crowded. So I think we take in consideration that we have to be extremely cautious of ourselves and everyone else. So I think that kind of puts us more on top because it's all about safety. To riding for us women out here, there's some women out here where open toe shoes, uh, flip flops, gym shoes, that's no grip, that's no grip. You must have some boots on with some rubber soles, some ankle support and whatnot. You can be cute, I tell the person in a minute, you can be as cute as you want to be, but baby, from the ankles down, you better have on some real riding gear. From the ankles down, you better have on real riding gear. From the ankle up, you could be as sexy as you want. You want all your skin out, have it out. You want all your boobs out, have it out. But it's nothing more than having a grip once you come to a stop. Being a veteran rider, I try to tell a lot of people, a lot of women, especially about riding in anything other than a good pair of boots. There are so many bones in your ankle that you cannot replace. A good pair of boots may save them bones that's in that ankle. If that bike goes over and you go to sliding and your, your ankle and your, your ankle and that bike between that, that asphalt is not going to be nothing nice to. I tell them all, always wear a nice good pair of riding boots. Nothing, nothing with slick bottoms on it, something with a little rub on the bottom so you can get a little grip. Being a rider for some time myself, I've been riding for, I don't know, probably 15, 20 years. There's nothing more gratifying than seeing a person, not only women, but men, proper attire when they're riding these bikes. Because knowing that what could happen, you should be properly dressed when you're driving these bikes. The gym shoes are slide, the flip flops are slide, the high heels are slide. I don't know. I mean, you can look good and be dressed good. If they were spending much time trying to look good and trying to learn some riding skills, they'd be up. You can't learn how to ride a motorcycle in three days. They can teach you some fundamentals, but you can't learn how to ride a motorcycle in three days if you go to the city or the state or whoever it is. When you go to Harley, they're going to rip you off for that $300. In five days, you still ain't going to be a rider. We live in a city where we only get three months, which is 90 days. And when you count down rain and other elements of that, you get about maybe this summer, we probably done had the best summer with 70 days of 70 riding days. But that first time you coming out in April and May, you need to be practicing because everybody got to get re to their bike. You just can't get out there and think you can do the same thing because 
you, you know, you, 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 you off. A lot of the newer riders want to be fair weather riders. You can't be a fair weather rider. You got to be willing to ride in all kind of conditions. Rain, but not, I ain't going to say no snow, but rain and look cold, look wind. You got to be able to ride. ride when it rains, don't come out. Don't come I see up. Barry. That man right there is the only man I know. I seen him in December when it was snowing. When it was snow on the ground. When that man had the man had his soft tail, his blue and white, black and white soft tail on Stony Island. And the snow. December the 19th, snow over there. He got a snowsuit on riding down Stony, baby. No, they they got money to buy a bike, but they ain't got no bike experience. After the winter. The beginning of the season, you need the whole month of April and some of May to get accolated back to your bike. Period. And that, that would be the best safety way, I would say it. And most of everybody need, I, you need to practice, you really need to have your license, your, your A license, your M license. But it's no time to be talking about, oh, we're going to go on a ride. You ain't rode your bike all summer. It's unfair. It's ride. unfair. To be talking about some well, y'all gotta hold on. Nah, you need to start practicing. Cause it's enough of us out here, you can ride every day. You, sir, have been riding for how long? 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. So you got a lot to teach people out here. So also, you know, you know what, man? I know about you, Herb. Whenever there's a ride, you are always the safety man. What do they call that? Road yeah, captain. Road I'm captain. the road captain for the Harley yeah. boys. For anybody I ride with, right. safety first. Exactly. Safety first. And if I'm not saying the road captain's job is to make sure that everybody gets home safe, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's what it's all Going about. Going and coming. Every city, every club, and every biker just about has bragging rights. As we filmed, we let the cameras roll on a select few as they express what makes Chicago so great for riding and even their individual shameless promotion for themselves and or their clubs. Summertime in Chicago, throttle and chrome. This is what it is, this is how rebels do it. This is how we do, this is how Chicago we do Chicago MC set, look at it, summertime, this is what we do. Turn around, look at you. Don't look at me. I'm sorry. Don't go all day long. You know, go across the street, you got something over here. Hold on, MC. It's come see us. And the police don't but, lie, they still out here too. It makes no difference. It makes no difference. It don't even matter. This is number one stunner blocking the house shot town. You watching throttle and chrome, baby. This is how we get down. The one pivot. I'm a ride or die chick. These other hoes can sit down. Right. The shot town women here is riding sports as Harley Davidson, South Hills Luck, and Street Glass. And da, 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 da. No, we have taken over, baby. We have taken over the streets. That's so right. No, we ride no hard. No longer just a man. Oh no, no baby. We have taken this over. No. We ride hard and we ride slick. That's how we do it. Well, outside of Myrtle Beach, it's the only place to be in the, in, in the summertime. I ain't hit New York yet, but I can tell you what shot town got to offer. We ain't really exploding yet. We just bullshitting around. You know what it is. We got these bikes, we got these whips, we got these girls, we got this lifestyle. Get on our level. And to be exact, I was the first, the first out here in the city to wear a 21. And I gotta give a big shout out to my brother Lanier because he rocked it too right before I did in Cali. We got the different trikes, bikes, Harleys, crotch rockets. This is how we do it big in Chicago. The bike scene is, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. The bikes are hot, the girls are hot, and there are a few token boys to up the excitement factor. In Chicago, the Windy City, it don't stay real nice for long. We get about three months of good riding weather, then it's a wrap. So we gotta get it in where we can. Shot Town's on. Come on here, we play, we, we play with our toys hard. We ride hard, and we that's that's what we do. Inside town. Inside town. Here in Chicago, we ride from 18 wheels down to two, and anything in between, it don't matter to us, baby. 18 wheels rolling. In Chicago, here, we all get along. It's all for about the ride, it's all for the love of the ride. You know, the two wheels. You, we stunners. We hey, sky's the limit with us. Certain clubs, it's, it's, they limited to what they can do. We stunners, sky's the limit. And we ride. I mean, we get up to 95, 100. We are the baddest. LA ain't got nothing on us. Chicago is its own entity. You know what I'm saying? We do it. We do do it like no other do it. 
a period across the United States, you know what I'm saying? So everywhere you go, people always respect Chicago for the things that we do because when we step into something, we do it big. We take over. We, we in our own. Motherfuckers hate us, but they gotta love us because shit, we the shit and they know it. Like, man, we don't lose. We don't lose. You heard it from Willie Boots and Roll Cap. We don't lose. Basketball, volleyball, roller skate. We play lacrosse, backgammon, uh, uh, Chinese checkers. We play shoots and ladders. We don't lose. We the future. And this is where the future is. The future lies within us. And for us to keep that going, we got to stay strong in unity and quality. And we working. I mean, we come out hard. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got time to be sitting up there at the crib all day trying to figure out how we're going to pay our bills. <laughs> this is what we spend our money on all day. Hey, I got to get these $2,000 sounds in my ear right now. I'm about to delete you motherfuckers. Let's hit it. <laughs> Yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying, the rebels, how we do, man. A little bike blessing, man. We all need some, you know, we all need the Lord in our lives, especially when we out here on these bikes. You know what I mean? We do try to do, you see, the crowd, man, our supporters, man. Everybody needs some blessings, man. Everybody needs the blessings in their life. He told me that I was protruding traffic. On the left hand lane? No, no, no. What? Because I had my four ways on when we was coming oh. out of the gas station, so he clocked, he got all of that. So that's why he pulled me over because I was protruding traffic. As a black person. Which has a black person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got the J man. You got the number one stunner for real. And the B man. What you got 30 years in the game? 37 years in the game. Ooh, wee. With no brakes. Man, I, I with no brakes. Born in. J-Man, no with breaks. no brakes, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> he did no downtown. Hey, he's talking no that downtown. Talk. <laughs> talking that hey, 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 huh? <laughs> Nigga had no downtime, man. Yeah, you don't take nothing off. No. I believe it. You need to come on down. If you ain't been down on the south side, you need to come on down to get down. Because this is how we get down in Chicago all the time. But this is what we do here in Chicago. Everybody's just at peace, and we ride these bikes, baby. That's what we do. That's what we always do. Chicago bike scene is like me. If you ain't like me, cut it out. I think this is just another evolution of black bike culture as we know it today. Clubs on top of clubs, some sun gonna come and go. I think a whole lot of them gonna be around to stay. I say the future is ours. Can you dig it? <laughs> Filming Throttling Chrome has been unequivocally both entertaining and inspiring. So much so that it inspired Big Jig and myself to form our own MC club titled Clutch and Chrome. Obviously playing off the name of this documentary and not far from formally being a part of the motorsport world as number one stunners ourselves. It was just time to start something different with new and old friends. Yo, what's up, Bike World? You're hanging out with Clutch and Chrome and Throttle and Chrome. Last time you saw me, uh, yeah, I was the number one stunner, but now we're doing the Clutch and Chrome thing here, MCs, in 2010, doing it with the crew. It's a bike thing, and this is what we do. Clutch and Chrome MCs, man, is a motorcycle club. You know, you do have other genres of motorcycle uh, divisions. You got motorsport clubs, you got, uh, you got social clubs, you got car clubs, you got sport bike clubs. We are a full-fledged motorcycle club. You cannot join this crew without having a motorcycle, and it's got to be a cruiser, Harley. Uh, it could be any cruiser you want. Yeah, boy. But this is what we do. We ride. This is the culture for us. This is not just a game for us. We gonna be riding every chance we get till the snow come down in the shy. Then we gonna leave the shy and go where, we are, where else we can ride. So this is what we do, man. Just, you know, you watching Throttle and Chrome, we're clutching Chrome. As a club, we look forward to the roads and adventures that await us as new MCs. However, for the moment and for those watching, start spreading the news. There's a new MC in town, Clutch and Chrome.
As an often used quote from an unknown author states, four wheels move the body, two wheels move the soul. Nothing else could be more true. As history has shown us, African American motorcyclists have come a long way from exclusion to now being in the forefront as recognized innovators, styling wizards, racing champions, stunt masters, and with historical club contributions to the bike culture. Before doing this documentary, the question begged the answer. Who is the motorcycle rider? Society would have you believe that the motorcycle rider is part history, part silver screen, and part misperception. Certainly the image of the overall biker is someone different to everyone. Regardless of such facts, when it comes to riding, no matter what motorcycle you ride, it's all the same wind. Yo, we've done a lot of traveling, man, over the last two years, man. We want to thank all the sponsors, all of the clubs that's been involved with this. Real Flavor Production, Millennium Designs. Thanks to everybody, all the clubs out there, MCs, motorsports, social clubs. We in it right now. Get ready for the second one. We out. Peace. 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 Peace out. One love. Peace out. We out. Believe that. It's like Michael Jackson. He bought the monkeys. It don't have to make sense.